Hi, we've got a really interesting case here today. Let me introduce you to Buxton, the lovely old English sheepdog. And isn't he gorgeous? His owner looks after him really, really well, brushes him incredibly uh, often. Um, yeah, absolute. He's a delight of a, uh, of a of a puppy dog. And he's only uh, he's still only about six or seven months of age. And he's here today because of a problem that I see quite regularly, but not so much in these guys, much more so in Staffies, uh, Bull Terriers, uh, Mastiffs, those sorts of dogs. And what he has is what's called base narrow canines. So I can't let him go, so I'll explain that in a sec. But here, if you just focus in on here, we can see what's going on. So the canines, dogs have four canines. They're the big fangs, if you want to look at them that way. I'll call them that. And if you have a look, there's one, there's the upper canine there, and there's the, um, the lower canine just there just poking its head up over the gum line, just there. And if you have a look on this side, there's the upper canine, there's the lower canine. Now the lower canine should fit in the space between the upper canine and the upper corner and size, and it should grow up into that space there. On this side, into that space there. But if you have a really careful look, you'll see this canine is actually growing up into the roof of the mouth. Same on this side. So let me just put Buxton away and then we'll have a quick talk about this. So we're here talking today about Buxton and his base narrow canines. So this is a model of the skull and we just looked at Buxton and he's got a, an upper canine and a, an upper corner incisor and an upper canine and an upper corner incisor. And these lower canines should be growing into those gaps here. But instead in Buxton, the, uh, the canines, rather than being out like that, are too narrow and too upright. And therefore, they're growing into the roof of his mouth. As I said, it's not a common problem, especially in, in breeds like Buxton's, but quite common in, in Staffies and, and Bull Terriers and dogs like that. So if we allow these teeth to grow up into the roof of the mouth, they'll dig holes in the roof of the mouth, literally dig holes. Now most dogs do not show pain uh, from that happening, but they are in incredible pain. Um, you imagine some you know, solid objects like these things digging into your mouth, and they can dig in quite some, some distance, you know, two, three, four millimeters. Incredibly painful, but dogs don't show pain. And therefore, many uh, veterinarians and many owners actually miss this. Now, in an er if we find it early, we can generally fix it quite easily. There are a number of treatment options available. The one we're using with Buxton today is we're going to just elevate these canines and move them slightly sideways. And we're going to take one of his temporary teeth. He's got some temporary um, teeth and I'll just use, I've, I've used this one here as an example. He's got some baby teeth still in, in his upper uh, cheek teeth and we're going to move the canine slightly sideways and then put, I find this one easier to do, put this little molar in as a wedge just to kick it out like that and that's going to kick it now in three to four days that will fall out but in that time period the canines will have changed from growing like that to growing like that. Um, his owner is also going to get a ball, and I don't have any balls here, so um, let's imagine this, this bottle is a round ball. And she's just going to put it in there and gently hold his mouth closed uh, half a dozen times a day just to help keep those canines growing in their new growth plane. Now, that surgery um, needs to be done at a very, very specific time. If we do it too early, it's too early and it doesn't work. And if it's too late, well, the canines are set in their growth path and, and we can't change it. So the timing is absolutely crucial. And that's why he's here today. We've been watching him every two weeks to come up with the right you know, day on which to do it. So treated at the right time and treated early, the success rate of this very simple surgery um, is, is incredibly high. Uh, if, if 
if it's too late for dogs, if, if we've gotten past this, you know, exactly the right day type phase, if, if we're too late, then there are some other uh, things that we can do and have to do. But, and I'm going to be really blunt. Um, it's not appropriate to have a dog whose canines are growing up into the roof of the mouth. I do see uh, a number of dogs that have been missed in the past because um, no one's had a good look in their mouth. Uh, and so if you've got a dog, a puppy dog, uh, have a good look at the canines. Make sure they're growing in their right direction. If they're not, come in and, and see me and we'll do something about it. Join me in the surgery later on when we get around to doing Buxton. He's going to be the first surgery uh, cab off the rank today. So we'll, we'll meet again in the surgery and I'll show you exactly what we do. So I'll see you then. Again with the lovely Buxton. He's in for two things today. One is the desexing, which we've just, which we've just finished. And then we're also going to do some manipulation of his teeth. Just focus in here and you can have a look. Um, I know we showed this earlier, but um, this canine is a base narrow canine, as is this one on, on this side, and they're coming up to straight. And so the idea today is that we just move them sideways a little bit, put a little wedge on the inside to wedge them out, and it'll kick them from being like that to like that. And so rather than those canines drilling up into the roof of his mouth for the rest of his life, um, it'll uh, uh, he'll he'll have a, a pain-free life with respect to, to the, what to his mouth goes because his canines will be sitting in the right spot. If you've watched the video on Protea, um, we're doing Buxton and Protea on the same day. You'll see what we did to her and what the end result was. Uh, the owners have just picked her up and they're absolutely wrapped. Now, the Protea is has got some aftercare. Um, I'll show you on Buxton now. So just hang fine. So the aftercare for Protea and Buxton is the same. We, as I said, we move these inside, uh, canines out, put a little wedge on the inside to keep them in, in place, to keep them kicking out like that. The wedge falls out in one to three, one to four days. I wish it had stayed longer, uh, but they always fall out. That's just the way it is. And so we do what I call ball exercises to help keep these teeth out. So if after these guys, after Buxton and Protea go home, uh, their owners will get the right size ball and the ball is got to be a different size for each dog and the ball will just sit and this is a perfect size for Buxton no it's a little bit too no it's not the right size um, so we'll have to get her to get another size a little bit bigger and the ball will sit here and she'll just gently hold Buxton's mouth closed for 10 or 20 seconds half a dozen times a day for the first week and that will maintain the outward spread of those teeth so that they've got their new growth path, you know, locked in place, no pun intended. So let's see if this ball's a little bit better. No, it's still too small, still too small. So if we didn't do this aftercare and didn't get those teeth, you know, um, to stay out, then they just fall back into where their old habits um, lead them and, and that wouldn't be very useful. So we um, will go ahead and do this now and I'll uh, catch up with you when we show you uh, what things look like uh, later on.